Do you have any cups like smaller than the small, like a mini cup? No, we don't. Okay, I guess I'll just do another small cold brew black, please. Thanks. You too. Welcome to the Mini Cupper, where we're going to be taking this base model $2,000 plain Mini Cooper, and in 24 hours, we're going to be turning it from this very boring pedestrian vehicle to this. What's up, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here, and thank you for joining me on this Mini Cupper series. Today, well, I should say in the next 24 hours, me, Danny, and Corey are gonna be transforming this $2,800 base model, rust-free Mini That's Cooper. Rust I, was, I looked, I'm like, oh, we can sandblast that, and I'm like, no, we can't fix that. That's so if funny. you sandblasted this, you would just be left with nothing. With yeah. dust. Rust oh. green. <laughs> that's the torque route. Oh my oh, that's god. Bad, hey, take it easy. Rust free Mini Cooper from a slow base Cooper into a performance, sexy, but still slow Mini Cooper. And as you can see, we're not in the shop today. Danny, where are we? Well. We are at the second rendition of Gridlife Circuit Legends at Lime Rock Park. And this little guy right here, by the end of the weekend, is going to be our fierce chariot for the Sunday Cup Time Attack series. So if you're not familiar with Sunday Cup as a whole, it's one of my favorite series that they run. And it's basically a slow car time attack series. So 25 pounds per horsepower, kind of based around the Honda Fit, but we're bringing something that we think can bring a lot more to the table than just a Honda Fit. Mike. You've already done a little bit of work getting this thing squared away. Oh, yeah. That's nasty. But we're gonna make it a little bit special. Corey, what do you think of this thing? See, I drove 12 hours from North Carolina to be here in my Mini Cooper S R53, and I'm real excited to get this Mini Cooper out on the track, but we got a lot of work to do before we can make that happen. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit more? I'm not entirely familiar with the timeline that we're working with, where we're trying to get, and also with some of your talent. Well, tomorrow we're gonna lay down our baselines for the car, so we're not gonna modify it till we get those, get those laps in tomorrow, the three sessions. Then it's all hands on deck. We're gonna just rip this thing apart, Gently. 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 Please. Gently. Put a lot of effort <laughs> into it, especially the headlights. We haven't really done much to the car since we bought it. It was actually pretty good turnkey. So with that, according to the rules per Danny and Sunday Cup, we have some seats, we have a steering wheel, we have pads, we have wheels, tires, suspension. Pretty much a roll everything cage. the rules allow us to do to make it a real race exactly. car. We gotta get it from grocery getter status to Lime Rock Park worthy. And not just a race car, but a sexy looking race car. We're also gonna be wrapping this car live here on the paddock. So make sure to leave a little bit of room for that and keep your greasy fingerprints off the car, please, okay? Quite literally from zero to hero. So, should be a good one. All right, boys, we have a lot of work to do tomorrow. We have a lot of driving to do and a lot, a lot of wrenching. So let's get some rest tonight. You drove a lot. You just look I'm good, just, so you're I'm, probably exhausted I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and uh, I know I'm tired. Hey, tomorrow is going to be an all-nighter to get this thing ready. Well, I wrenched already, so you guys will be wrenching all night. Tomorrow, I'll just guide you through the line. Hey, we got this. We got this. <laughs> the next morning, we started with some race weekend essentials. A driver's meeting, bringing the car through Good Life's tech inspection, and slapping on the Sunday Cup appropriate stickers so that the car was officially ready for competition. Nice headlights, dude. You know? Looking good. They look better on Morowski's car, though. We got to do windshield banner and the other door stickers. And then I want to torque the lugs, maybe pop those center caps out, which sucks. And then just double check the axle nuts. Money, boys. And just like that, the Mini Cupper was ready for its debut. Wait, before this Mini could ever consider setting a tire on the tarmac, this Cooper was in need of the full FCPRO treatment. It's 
a oh well, you know, tortilla spec, just like the, <laughs> the subframe. Spec. The only difference is for the racing, the oh, yeah, we, uh, you know, luckily we don't need this to go around the track. The subframe though, on the other hand, is pretty much doing this currently, uh, but that's not gonna fly. We can't, we can't go fast with that. So we are gonna be replacing that. And a couple other things, you know, this car, maybe or maybe not came out of a salvage yard for unknown reasons. Wouldn't guess why, clean title though, but it was cheap and it's what it's gonna get us to go racing uh, at a, an affordable price. So before we go racing, things like discs, pads, fluids, uh, some control arms, sway bar end links, that kind of good stuff is all gonna be replaced uh, before we hit the track, making the car just A, drivable, and B, at least to be able to survive the Sunday Cup Grid Life Weekend coming up soon. So. We're gonna get into that first. We're gonna leave all the boring stuff for here in the shop. It'll be two seconds for you, an eternity for me. I think I need a tent in the shop, legit. There's no way I'm not gonna get rust in me somehow. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. That is, uh, how you say? No problem. Look at that. I'm surprised the steering rack was even held in by anything anymore. Happy that's out? I'm so happy this is out. With this R56's questionable past life, I couldn't leave a single stone or bolt unturned. With the subframes out and the front clip off, I threw as much of the FCPO catalog at it as I could, refreshing all the problematic seals, engine mounts, control arms, and even made sure to give the fragile cooling system some love with a whole lot of parts from our friends over at Ryan. With everything buttoned up, now it was ready for Danny and Corey to rip it out on the track. You are joining me for session one at Circuit Legends in the Mini Cupper. The car is bone stock and on all seasons, which generally our rule of thumb, we say you're gonna do pads, discs for a track setup and then some good tires. So we're on all seasons. These are gonna get really hot really fast. So we'll do our best. We're already a little loose. I took the cupper out for the first session with Corey taking the wheel for the second session of the day. We both kind of shared a common goal, myself getting comfortable in the Mini just as a car and Corey getting comfortable with the notoriously tricky Lime Rock part. Do not want to overdo the grip here. Woo, there we go, let's, let's go. All right, and we are coming into the downhill at Lime Rock Park to start our first flyer lap. I still have traction control on. No! All right, we're good now. I can hear a little tire roar. Maybe that means I am not slowing down too much. Hit fourth. Big rollover on these all seasons. A little bit of dirt there. <laughs> Not a ton of front end grip. Tires are definitely the limiting factor right now. With the all seasons screaming, we took mental notes of the cupper's shortcomings to create a baseline for improvement. And while we weren't necessarily fast while we were doing it, we were having an absolute blast. I gotta turn my traction control off. I feel it cutting me. It's cutting my power. I need every horse she's got. Coming up on 100 miles an hour. It's about all she's got. And we just ran a 117. Crack out. And that's the last lap I gotta go, but I wanna keep going. 
this thing rules. I just didn't want to send off the tires before oh, you got a chance because okay, I could feel them rolling over issue. and cooking. But uh, I mean, it, I'll put it this way: it's not the slowest car out there right now. No, no, you were yeah. you were gaining on yeah, people. You were getting really comfortable around. Uh... It's a little <laughs> skaty. You can when it starts to roll yeah, over on the sidewall, over you get that one loose. second of I'm going straight off. You back off a little bit; it <laughs> rotates nicely. If we were to just stick the RT660 on this car, I'm not saying it would be top of the class, but it would be class competitive. So this thing rules as a chassis. I'm already stoked. Okay. It seems fast too. Okay. Um, I'm really eager to see what it looks like tomorrow morning. Woo! Okay, that was a blast. How was it? I was, I was getting it, starting to get the hang of it. Shaving some couple seconds off there, but it's a little loosey goosey out there. The uh, I was cooking it enough to get the traction control on, so I probably should have turned that off. But yeah, I can't wait till we, we get this firmed up, we get those Bilsteins on, we get some fresh actual race tires on, not just these all seasons we got. Yeah, this is gonna be very, very fun. Okay, so we've done our sessions, each of us, on the completely stock setup. I think you managed to send off the all seasons pretty well. We've kind of found the limited grip there. I think before we jump into the whole build, it'd be really fun for the last session of the day maybe to rip these guys off and throw the 660s on, just see how a real tire works for us. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, let's just see how upgrading the wheel and tire package alone with yeah. the stock suspension, how that's gonna work out on the track. I'm really excited to get it out after that because we've we reached the limit of these. These are, I think we went these past are cooked the and they're, <laughs> they've got that aroma. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll let it cool off for a second. We'll put in some new studs, some spacers, and then we'll slap the 660s on with the new wheels, which are also lighter added benefit and then uh we'll let it rip unsprung it... weight yeah unsprung weight yeah, huge we can get some of that off of there yes so moving into the track car realm now very exciting Right here we have possibly the biggest upgrade of the weekend besides the suspension. These are our end keys and they are very appropriately styled for a nice little Mini Cooper. Also of course wrapped in the RT660s. These are from Falcon Tires, they're the Azenis. Uh, class tire for Sunday Cup, you have two choices. So the 615Ks which are awesome, they wear like nails, or you have the 660 which in my experience is a little bit more like a gumball. They're nice and sticky, slap them on, you're going to run some great times right out of the box. So. We have a set of four of these. We're gonna slap them on. These are also going from bicycle tires. I don't know the width of those wheels that were on that thing to a 15 by seven, I believe. And it's also a 205 width tire. The car, tires coming off the car were a 175. So this is gonna be huge. Gonna buy us a bunch of time right out the gate. So let's get these on. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, dude, these are shot. Look at that slag. <laughs> Good moves, boys. All right, All right big, big clear. moment. Watch your feet. A little. Dude. Is a parking brake on? Or is that where she sits? Nope, that's where it is. <laughs> Hold on, one sec. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's... That that's where it is? Sick, dude. I'm sure this won't rub at all when we're leaning and yawing around the track. <laughs> Good thing well, the fenders the are bill, plastic. The Bilstein's on there won't be quite so 4x4 four no, four look. The Bilstein's will be the move, but I'm still eager to kind of see what happens. We should, uh, do we have like a... We could like measure before and after the Bilstein's. Oh, we should. That's a good call. <laughs> yeah, one box of Carbotech pads. One Carbotech box worth of gap. Right. Look at that. Next side. Perfect. Yep. Oh, we haven't done this. XP tens, which are way too much brake for this car. It's awesome. <laughs> so one of the big perks of something like the 615 or these 660s is if you look how wide these shoulders are, and also obviously there's less grooves cut in than like our all seasons that you've seen all day. This is a much bigger contact patch. You have all of this nice, soft, sticky rubber. This is a 200 treadwear tire. So where the other ones are kind of like hockey pucks, this is, like I said before, more like a gumball. 
And another big perk to these is you have these grooves which are meant for water channeling. So if there is a little bit of moisture, something like that, you can still get some pretty good traction. It's why these are considered a street tire, is because they have the water channeling. 200 tread wear is pretty modest in the grand scheme of things. Super usable, you could daily drive these as long as there's no snow and maybe a little bit less rain. I'm just imagining you intentionally not torquing these to spec now. Okay, go have fun, Danny. All right, Danny, go crush I'll it. I'll see you brother. later. <laughs> no. Mini cupper, phase one and a half. Yes. It goes straight to like six after this, yeah. but that looks good. That looks good. It's gonna look better. You know, phase one of the sexiness, it's it's just tasteful. This is like, I mean, this would be an HBDE car at this point. Yeah. You don't really, I mean, you need maybe a pad, and after that, you're good to go. So. All right, let's torque these nuts down and then uh, get ready to go back out there and set a blistering lap of 109. 109 is the goal? 109, 110. Oh, now you're down with it. With a 110 in his sights, Corey rolled out of the paddock on the Cuppers N-Keys and stickered RT660s. The hottest point of the day and with more changes for him to get used to, it would be a tall order considering that a 110 would only be about four seconds off pace of the Honda class leaders. But with real tires finally going on the car, it would be a lot of fun to start seriously chasing times. To really nobody's surprise, the RT660s massively changed the handling and corner speed of our otherwise stock Mini Cooper, and Corey was flying. With the added grip from the tire comes even more strain on everything else, so the roll and even the push of the car was a bit accentuated as the Mini Cooper pitched and rolled around the track. Even still, the tires alone chopped four more seconds off Corey's best lap time of the day. We didn't quite get that 110, but to shave this much time off is no small feat for someone in a new car and at a new and very intimidating track, emphasizing the massive return of just a simple tire swap. Look through the turn, look through the turn, look through the turn, there we go. The car wasn't anywhere near its full potential just yet, but Corey was still chopping away at his times and having fun doing it. It is getting quicker, for sure. Now once we get that suspension dialed in, that's really going to shave some time off. Mini Cupper, 115.9. Okay. That's a okay. substantial amount of time for just tires and wheels. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Did you feel like the brakes were starting to become the weak link? Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't brake too hard in the in the first turn. Yeah. So I was giving myself a lot of space there, yeah, which I, I was saw. probably losing like a second or two right losing there. Losing a little bit of time, but it's better to play it safe, and especially yeah. there with slick, better to play it safe than go flying off yeah. into the abyss. And I so. didn't take this all the way to the edge. That was just the warm up on the tires. Like there's, yeah. I can there's get a lot closer to the edge. <laughs> yep. And the next time you'll have coilovers, less weight, sway bars, yeah. and the brakes to do it. Drops, Drops down great. a little bit, yep. gets a little more planted, but even just the tires, it's way more planted than it was before. Yep. With that, we're gonna find Mike. Hopefully he hasn't uh, jumped over to pizza and beer just yet because we got a lot of work to do. Let this thing cool off for a second and then I think the next shot you're gonna see is us getting this thing up in the air and getting to work. We have a lot of work to do. Hey, over three seconds yep. saved. I'm happy with that. Let's it's, get some more seconds off. It's 3.30. We have a long night ahead of us. All right, so we got the boys from Rabbit Raps cleaning the car after a couple laps out on track. They're going to start laying down the wrap. We have it up on jack stands. Uh, Corey and Danny are going to start ripping apart the interior, getting ready for the cage install. And then uh, Alex is going to give me a hand. We're going to get the coilovers built. That way, once the car cools down a little bit, we can take off the old stuff, swap in the new stuff. We'll be done in a few hours. It's some time for pizza and beer. I'm a normal guy.
No backseat passengers anymore. Look at this. This is too nice for like any $2,000 car, even this thing. Sir, this is not a this is not a Cayman. It's easier to work on than a Cayman. Well, we'll find out when this rusted pinch roll doesn't come loose. Then it won't be easier to work on than a Cayman. Everything's a little the world. And I need a bigger hammer, though. What do you think of mini cover? Uh, yeah, I'm glad we're moving on it right now. <laughs> I said we could find yeah. sticking. There's a safety truck rolling in. Get that carpet out of there. Right, get the razor blades going. Start sending. You gotta have. You gotta be relentless. With this stuff. And, uh, a weird, that's a strange place. We had some uh, Bilstein B14s with some uh, Vorschlag plates. She gave us some uh, camber adjustment that we need to uh, set some blistering laps here, my friend, and really get the most grip out of these uh, RT660s. So right now, I'm just kind of making sure that the new strut mount looks the same as the old one. We're going to send it up in there, get it snugged up. Should be good to rock and roll. Here at FCP Euro, we've been there too. Whether it's your daily driver, you're just trying to get back out on the road, or whether it's a weekend car like our Mini Cupper that we're trying to get back out on track or even on a good back road. From suspension to brakes to cooling system, you name it, fcpero.com has everything that you need and can ship it right to your door. And if you're in a rush, you can even come pick up your parts right here at FCP Euro because we all know that a project car is never complete. And whether you're a professional wrencher or just a weekend DIYer, FC Fierro has everything that you need to get your project covered and back out on the road. Mike, why are we cutting these? So we have adjustment for these babies up here because what's happening is these hex bolts are getting buried by the factory strut tower. So with the cut, we'll have access to the two hex heads and we can adjust them as needed. So pretty standard stuff whenever you're installing some aftermarket suspension with a lot of adjustability. Just a little modification, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You came in like 320, 330. Yeah, it was like 357, 347 when we started. I think so. Running second in the grid like touring cup points this season. Open the screwdriver. How's, how's it going, Mike? It's going good. Uh, just buttoning up the uh, front suspension now. We got brakes in. Pads are in. Fast, baby. Yeah, just a little bit. Now go up with her. The Mini Cupper was finally starting to come together. With a proper wheel and tire setup, a beefed up braking system, and with our stellar Bilstein B14 coilover kit complemented by a stiffer rear bar for some extra rotation, it was time to move into our stripped out interior and begin the puzzle of making our auto power roll cage fit for the first time. With the need to drill into the chassis and with little room for error, this would be one of the trickier parts of our overnight build. There we go. Woo. I get a knife Woo. and cut it open. Back, 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 back. 
back. So this is our auto power main hoop right here. It's really nice because it comes painted, which is huge, so it doesn't get all nasty and rusty in the car. Uh, first thing we're going to do, take this, mock it up, and then start assembling the cage loosely in the car. So what that means is we can start tracing these feet, since this is a bolt-in cage, start tracing them on the carpet, cut out a nice little rectangle so we know exactly where to drill holes, bolt into the floor, and then we can kind of just drop the whole thing in and make it permanent. So this obviously, a huge safety structure. You get your harnesses bolted in safely. You get the car kind of tightened down in case of a rollover incident. But the other thing is, is it adds rigidity to the chassis. It tightens up the whole body. So you actually gain performance while you're also gaining safety. It's a win-win. So we stuck on the e-brake. Don't cut anything important. Uh, it will fit, it just isn't yet. Now it's gonna fit. Thanks, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Sometimes you gotta just do what you gotta do to make things fit. So we trimmed out and gutted what was left of the interior to allow our cage to properly and safely fit in our abbreviated timeline, as the rule book states we're allowed to do as per the Sunday Cup rule set. That was perfect, Corey. You didn't nick a single wire either, somehow. Better. Much better. It looks like someone scaled a remote control car. A thousand percent. Tony is out of the car. We'll get you an additional update. So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, let me see it. It looks like they scaled a remote control car. And uh, Tony is out and walking, by the way. So he's got some yes. He just got it wrong. There should be a giant antenna on the top. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Honestly, it's like the eggshell white. What do they call it? Pepper white? Pepper white. The pepper white. It looks better than if it was like straight white because it makes it contrast more. It's really nice. Also, the FCP Euro blue and the CRP Rhine orange are like really good together. It's a nice change and it also works really well, which we said that with the yellow on 850. I don't know if we're just like, it's just, it's nice to have a little bit of variety. Look how nice that pops too. It's good. So uh, we're slamming the f out of this Mini Cooper, and we're taking these and we're putting them in the trash. Like he is said. That technical enough. This is the engineer. You just gotta slam it, smack it around. Fixed. Staying pretty clean. Everything's going on easy. Everything's going good. Yeah, the wind is, the wind is cooperating. Uh, so so far so good. So if it doesn't go past uh, his slick like path, right? Oh, it's gonna look past uh, past now, so but I'm sure it's gonna go fast too. By the way, don't miss. intended to keep as much of the Cupper's factory interior ambiance as possible, our quick timeline for this build and priority for safety over cosmetics meant we instead opted to take out anything that would pose an obvious problem with the install. The carpet, rear portion of the interior, and the headliner were all yanked out and tossed to be certain that all of our safety equipment was anchored correctly and safely. Mike, what are we doing under there? Oh, you know, just bench pressing the rear end of a Mini. Here, give it a couple of Johnsons. Oh, yeah, you know, no problem. Indirect so much. Can't see anything. <laughs> so we have a uh, Hotchkiss rear sway bar that we're installing. It's gonna be, uh, it's quite a bit bigger. It's almost uh, about a time and a half, times and a half, is that right in English? Times and a half the size of the factory one. Uh, but with that, it's gonna give us a little less body roll on the track, give us a lot more control, and should honestly improve our time a lot. Uh, and with that, we have some new, obviously some new clamps, some new bushings, and uh, these have some grit, grease fittings, so they're serviceable, uh, so they don't squeak on us or get noisy, but uh, yeah, it should be quite the upgrade.
So we just got the sway bar installed, the Bilsteins in the rear. We got the Carbotech pads on. Sway bar is all attached, new end links obviously. And uh, now just the wheels. Obviously once the wrap is done and the cage is done, we can put the car on the ground. Right now we have the thing dumped. Like freaking slow setting on the front and the rear. Lowest. Sorry, slow setting. The lowest. The lowest. <laughs> And then uh, we'll pick it up and adjust as needed. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, you know, it's uh, 6.52. What did I say? 8.37? Yeah. But we got an hour and... Uh, I'm good at math. I'm doing math. There's 43 that. minutes left. I don't know. Whatever. So as, long as somebody, so as long as somebody cared when they put the cage together, we'll be done before like 7.30. Uh, you know, it's not pre-drilled. No, you got to drill the four. No, not the four. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, the four bars. Yeah, yeah. All right, so maybe like nine. You got to fit it in there, make some marks, and then drill it together, no? It's a perfect excuse to order pizza, though. You guys, are you, is everybody good with pizza? So what's awesome about Mini Cupper and this whole project, and Sunday Cup in general, is this is really budget racing, and what it does is it gets people super excited. And so we have three dedicated people that are supposed to be working on this car. We have Hidalgo, we have Danny, and then we have Corey from CRP. Um, these guys are the dedicated stuff. What has happened is we have a group of people that are hanging out. I got Jacob over here sitting in the mini seat. I'm sitting here putting the cage together. People spectating. It just becomes like this infectious thing where everyone wants to help out. Everyone wants to get this car back, back on track, get it going, see what they can do. And that is what is so cool about us. It is literally as team oriented as what your sport gets. It is just people helping each other out, having fun, holding shoe hearts in the cars. And then this car is going to be going 10 seconds flat past for next, you know, tomorrow. Um, from a night of wrenching with your buddies. Does it get much better than that? I mean, it's pretty awesome. So. Mike and Alex having hammered out pretty much all of the suspension and brake work that the cupper would need, and with the Rabbit Wraps crew making pretty quick work of a smaller than normal canvas, Corey and I had gotten most of the interior stripped out. Next came one of the bigger tasks of the night in the form of installing our full bolt-in roll cage. So this is about as clean as we need it. We're going to move on. I've got Alex Nelson and all of his uh, long limbs here to help me wrangle the cage in here. We're gonna kind of drop the whole thing in, get it assembled, and then we'll either mark it on the floor if we feel the need, or if everything kind of sits squarely and nicely, we'll just start drilling. And then from there on, we put the pinch plates from underneath, bolt it in, torque it down, and then seats, belts, put some stuff back together, and that's pretty much it. Hardware at my house tonight to put the steering lawn. We can't find a M5 bolt here. I was giving you the mic. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go to my house to get an M5 bolt. But we're gonna put in the rest of the Sparco stuff while we can. Um, and uh, we have sliders, rails, seats, and it'll be super sweet. Should we kiss? No, we should not kiss. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't know that was a moment. All right, so we have our two Sparco sprints here with our Sparco side rails. We're gonna mount them on the Sparco seat brackets with some sliders. Obviously, this is going to be a very communal car for us. Uh, everyone's gonna get a turn with it. So making it so you can kind of move the positioning around, everyone can share, have a good time, but also more importantly, this is really, really high quality safety equipment. So not only, like we were saying earlier, are we making the car much better to drive in general. I mean, this is going to hold you in a lot better than a stock seatbelt, especially when you add the Sparco harnesses in. But of course, on top of that, should anything happen, which is always the concern, 
we know that this is going to hold us in the seat and having a nice six point harness, six point coming up between the lap as well, it's going to hold us in the seat. You have a little neck protection in there and you are locked in, you're safe and you're good for whatever may happen. Yeah, this, this, What's uh, what's last and how'd it go? Uh, it, well, first of all, it went well. And last thing we're doing, just we're just doing a full seating, so we're getting the vinyl to um, to 200 degrees and uh, make sure our lapping lifts and uh, you guys can act a little bit tomorrow. And uh, don't look, don't look, you know, not look like a bunch of amateurs. I think it looks great. Yeah, we can't wait to see you when the thing's on the ground and uh, hopefully get a little little better stance than uh, this morning. So. Right now. We're going to try to find some M5 bolts for the steering wheel. First, we're going to hit up Chase Base. Seems like a likely answer. I, I have a bunch of M62. I don't have any five, M5 bolts. You wouldn't happen to have a mushroom and pepperoni and pizza slice. Where'd you get that? Oh, dude, we have five pizzas. There's a bunch of hungry men over there, though. You might have to fight no, them. No, One of them is me. Enjoy, man. All right, yeah. Thank you, guys. No, you're good. I'm just going to ask more people. M5 by 1.8 bolts. M5 bolts. Alright, no, that's totally fine. Alright, on to the next person. Let's ask Chef. Do you guys have any M5 bolts or hardware that we would be able to buy or borrow? No, maybe uh maybe David has. Hey uh Eddie! Hmm. I'm I don't think we do. If we each get, if everybody no, takes one, one bar, just, yeah. if everybody takes yeah. one bar, everyone one takes one. We can all. I have some at home. I think I have M5 bolts holding a bar on my car that's like not super necessary. How many? I can give you a couple. We are looking yeah. for six M5 bolts. <laughs> and we M5? can't find. Nobody. I've toured the whole car. Really? <laughs> no way. Oh. There's some, oh my goodness, that's perfect. We have one. This is M5. Okay. That one? That's M5. All right, we can hold our steering wheel on. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's M5. Is that M5? Uh, that is also M5, yes. So we have three. That's also M5. Or, dude, is this one? Is this another M5? Yep. At this point, I'm just reaching into your things and taking. No, it's all good. No, trust me. <laughs> I mean, I, at this point, we could oh, run the steering wheel. Another one. Cheap. The next one also. That's six. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, right on, man. My name's Alex. Eric. Nice to meet you, Eric. Yes, sir. We're building the Mini Cooper, and we just needed this to put the steering wheel on. Hell yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. We got six M5 bolts. They're pretty much all different, but it's gonna work thanks to this man right here. Thank you, sir. Hi. Sir. I have acquired. No, you didn't. No way. Yes. Hardware. You're the man. I literally went to every single stall. You got one. And one all, one of I started coming back. Yeah, and eventually, ball. someone was like, yeah, I got some five hardware. I know it. Thank you, Alex. Mike, it's uh, it's 8:36. 8:36? What did you say earlier? 8:37. You know, if I wanted to not be so dumb, I could have been like, it'll be done at nine o'clock. But you know, 8:37 felt good. It's 8:36. The pizza's here though, so. I think I said nine o'clock at one point. Yeah, there we go. So Mike, finally got. I mean, it's been a long time since we've been in here. What was the Yippie Cayenne? We just got pizza and beer again. Yippie Cayenne? Yippie Cayenne. Ring any bells. Oh, that was the ben. one where you got that's scammed. Ben. I don't think so. Huh? That was the one where you got scammed. Remember that one? Oh yeah, I thought I got scammed for this one. That's Ben up here. Do you recall a Yippie Cayenne series, Ben? Do you recall a Yippie Cayenne series? Anyways, mini cupper series, almost done. With the last of Friday's daylight now fully faded to darkness, 
The crew continued to hammer away on getting the bolt-in cage permanently seated in the cupper. With the main hoop and front section both permanently bolted to the floor, we drilled and sent the last of the hardware through the steel sleeves that would tie both the front and the rear sections of the cage together, rounding out the most labor-intensive part of our overnight build. This entire project, I mean, oh, you're back? bar our you're time, or what, but this entire project with the car and all the parts is less expensive than the wheels that I bought for my M Coupe, which has done zero miles in two years. This is way more fun, and I've met way more people and had way more better time than staring at my cool wheels in a box. This is the Sunday Cup pitch because on top of that you get the reliability of like a pedestrian car. So you do this, and then you do the laps over and over and over. Now I'm gonna and now I'm gonna break my record. Okay. The cage is mostly anchored down, thanks to Alex. You're very sweaty, predictably. Um, a lot of work has been done by these guys. Shout out them, especially since I don't think they showed up expecting to work. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know, the team here rules. And we're happy to have you also, of course. Um, after this though, after the cage is set, we have to put the driver's seat in. We're gonna just throw the stock passenger seat in because we're not allowed to have passengers anyways. So once we have the driver's seat in, uh, we can start running the harness, which looping over here, super easy. Basically the only bigger thing is going to be the anchor bolts for the lap belt and then, or the lap belt on both sides and then the uh, uh, center belt. Mm -hmm. So those will just be through the body again, just like the cage. We have special hardware and eye bolts for all that. Run the harness, done, that's it. So we can lower the car back down. I think we'll probably align it uh, tonight is my guess. I don't know for sure. We'll see how far off it is. Um, well, it's gonna be dumped. <laughs> it's gonna it? be dumped. Okay. Uh, I don't know how far these guys dropped it down. I'm eager to see. Hopefully a lot. All the way. It needed all of it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But uh, we'll have to do the alignment once the car's back on the ground. Retorque anything that we untorqued uh, that still needs it. And then otherwise, I mean, we got a nice sparkle wheel in here. We'll have the harnesses. It'll be good to go. <laughs> So obviously we've gone through a bunch of different things we've changed, all with all different kinds of benefits, but like the cohesive package is now together. The car looks legit. It's got all the safety equipment we need. It's tightened up, ready to rip. We've got all the proper suspension on it. We got actual suspension adjustment. This is pretty much to the top of the Sunday Cup class. We followed the rule book. Everything is ready to go. Additionally, an added benefit to this is by going with a full cage, it's technically pretty much B-spec legal as well. And also they've kind of, over the past couple of years, been talking about, I believe it's Sunday Club they're calling it, which is a wheel to wheel version of Sunday Cup. This car would also slip into there. We may want to add a little bit of ballast just to kind of make up for things. We have to weigh the car. That's going to be a part of it tomorrow, most likely. But uh, we added a ton of weight, putting the cage in as well. So it kind of all balances out and the engine is bone stock. We still have stock exhaust, stock intake, just like the Sunday Cup rule book says. So this thing's ready to go. I have a feeling it's going to pick up a ton of time tomorrow, just being stiff having a proper alignment in it, uh, and just being anchored into the seat properly with some nice brakes and some nice tires. So RT660s, we now have everything to support actual grip in this car. It's gonna be a really, really good time. Well, we got a lot done in just a little bit of time, right? I think we are good to go. We got three sessions tomorrow. It'll be the first, first run of it now in its new form. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think, uh, so I'll, I'll take it in the morning, I think break everything in, make sure everything's working properly. We'll nut and bolt if we need to make any changes. You hop out in session two, let it rip, and I think from there we'll just see how the rest of the weekend goes. Absolutely. We should probably go to sleep. <laughs> we have a long day ahead of us to tomorrow. Yeah. You drove 12 hours today. Yeah. 
yesterday. That was yesterday? Yesterday, yes. Uh, so yeah, let's go to bed. <laughs> we had a full day of racing and wrenching today. Transformation. It does, look at it, it doesn't even look like the same car. It's unbelievable, It's dude. amazing. Also, again, rabid wraps. I don't know how they did that. We were working on the car, which is possibly the most annoying thing you could have if you're wrapping a car. People coming in and out. It came out great. It looks unbelievable. This is what a 30 degree angle feels like. You gotta let it settle too. You need to let it settle. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Wait, wait, wait. With the sun rising over beautiful Lime Rock Park for the final day of competition with Grid Life came our first proper glimpse of the product we had worked so hard on the night before. We had built a race car in just six hours in complete darkness with a handful of parts, and we did it with our friends having a good time and making memories along the way. As our team reveled in the Mini's final form, Corey and I attempted to shake last night's exhaustion to prepare ourselves for the busy day ahead. With a fully built car in front of us, there wouldn't really be any more excuses if we didn't perform as well as we wanted to. We would have to be in our best form, and we were both chomping at the bit to get out there and see what the Mini could do. But before we did, we noticed a buzz around the cupper. Our friends and competitors in the paddock were excited for us, just because we had actually managed to finish the build. But after the initial morning excitement, it was time for both of us to get serious. With an early 9 a.m. first session and a nice cold track for us to take advantage of, as well as a car that so many people had worked so hard on the night before, we made a plan for the day. Before we could get out on track though, we had one more big hurdle to get over before we broke in the Mini Cupper. Running the car back through Gridlife's tech inspection following our overnight build. And I'll spare you the details of me explaining what's about to happen here. Before I go out on the track, I'm gonna have to stop at the end of pit lane to allow the staff to do an on-the-fly tech inspection of the car just to make sure everything is up to code. Should we fail or have anything that raises concern, I have to bring the car back into the paddock before getting the car out on the actual track, which could definitely end up potentially costing us some valuable track time. As the minutes ticked by, I started to get a little bit anxious about getting out on the track. Of course, I wanted the car to be safe and up to code for competition, but I was all too aware of the fact that every single minute spent in pit lane was a lap that was missed out on the track. Every second felt like an hour, but finally we got the okay to send the cupper out on the track for its very first shakedown as a true race car. All right, we are on track in the mini cupper. I gotta get the brakes up to temp because we got real pads now. I gotta get the tires up to temp. We have about a half a session. I'm gonna feel the car out. It feels really, really good right now, I gotta say. That was a dime, which is fine. Always remember to clear uh, random things out of your interior. I'm just gonna get everything hot, and then I'm gonna go for a flyer out the gate, because I don't know how much time I'm gonna have in this car, and it feels fine right now. All right, let's go. First lap at Lime Rock, in the Mini Cupper, fully built. Breaking hard at the three to get some heat in the brakes. This car feels unbelievable. And checkered flags waving. <laughs> I have to go in the pits. Uh. As I'm doing a pretty poor job of hiding here, that was pretty tough. A cool track free of drift debris or overheated tarmac is kind of your best chance to set a fast lap and time attack. I was all too aware of the fact that I had missed out, but honestly, I think it was probably a good thing. Caught up in the competition, I definitely would have absolutely sent it if I had the opportunity. Not a good way to shake down the car for Corey, and definitely not a good way to make sure that everything was bolted and torqued properly after the chaos of last night. 
Well, uh, the car feels unbelievable. The only con to that session is I did not get a lap in. I got one warm up lap and then the checkered wave. So uh, I didn't get a time in, but I do think the car feels awesome. It gave me the time to shake the car down. So whether it's me or Corey going out next, whatever it may be, uh, I know all we have to do is, I, I think they gave us one bolt to check in the back, but I know now that the car is dialed. The brakes feel unbelievable considering they're fresh on the car, brand new. This is an awesome car. I'm so excited to see what it does over the course of the day, over the next two sessions. This is probably going to be where most of the drivers set their best times. First session's the coolest, the drift cars haven't gone out yet. But I'm confident in this setup that if we get pretty comfortable in session two, this thing can put in a crazy, crazy lap. So stay tuned. Good car. But before we got too lost in the heat of the battle, we took a minute to remind ourselves why we were here in the first place to partake in the tight-knit community that is Gridlife Time Attack. Gridlife isn't just about the cars in the competition, it's about the people, and our Sunday Cup class is possibly the champion of camaraderie and friendship out on the circuit. We went and checked in with our competitors to see what they thought of our cupper, but also to ask them one simple question. Why don't you tell us, why do you love Sunday Cup? Uh, because it's the absolutely most accessible version of Time Attack. So uh, there's nothing else like it We're for getting access to this competitive environment at this low cost. These are cars that you can daily drive, take them to the track. How do I know that? Because that's what I do. Oh, dude, I love Sunday Cup just it's because it's so accessible. Like I was in a faster class at one point and I was realizing my budget was just going up and I wasn't getting much faster and I actually cared more about driving. So that's where I came down to a class that we're kind of limited on what we can do from a car, but from a driver perspective, all the competition is there. All you from the time you get in the car, exactly. Yeah, dude, I, I would love to see you guys up there. I mean, it's so much about experience, and for me, it's like my first time at a lot of these tracks. Right, So learning as you go. Learning as you go and trying to compete with these guys out here, is, it's tough, but. And also, another beauty of Sunday Cup, tiny little cars, yeah, running some of the craziest tracks in the country. It's oh, unbelievable. yeah. So, yeah, right awesome. here, Watkins, you know, these big name tracks. So, no, I'm pumped to be here, having a great time. So we may have missed the first session, but we now at least knew that the cupper was locked in, dialed, and ready to rip following our late night teardown and rebuild. The car was now primed and ready for Corey to go out and hit the track. Strapped in, I feel like I'm about to get ejected out of an F-16 fighter jet. We threw Corey into the fire again with a whole host of changes for him to get used to, but it was pretty clear that Corey was liking the cupper in its new precision instrument form. His times kept dropping and dropping and dropping as he leaned into the Bill Stein coilovers. All right, let's go for a deeper break in a turn one. Here I go. Yep, Corey was definitely getting comfortable in the cupper. In its first real competition session, the car was doing just fine. Definitely a huge relief for us. I mean, just two weeks ago, the thing was sitting on the lot of a scrapyard. Now, it was out on a historic racetrack, setting flying laps, and we were in it just working to be faster and faster. This was Time Attack, and we were out there basking in it with a relatively small financial and time investment. Ooh, that was amazing. This car is set up so well. That was a blast, but now the car's warmed up. We've only got one session left. I'm going to turn the keys over to Danny because I think he's going to I think he's going to be his personal best at Lime Rock in this thing because it is a scorcher. I think you're right. On the one, the warm-up lap that I did, I'm I'm fairly confident that my per, my personal best is a 106 in this equally slow car. I think that's going to go a lot faster. I just feel more comfortable. I think you're going to shave so. a couple seconds off of that. Yeah. And you really you really just got a feel of it. I mean, you had that warm-up and then it was boom checker. You really didn't get to see its potential. I'm ready, I'm really excited. But we're gonna get you a full session out there. We'll it's see you great. soon. Heading out for my first true laps in the fully built Mini Cupper.
Mini Cupper, another improvement up to the 106 is now and into seventh place. I wonder what they did to make more difference go down now. I think part of it is the installation process. The rest of it is setting up the car, getting it dialed in, the, the camber, the caster, whatever else you can adjust. Tire pressure is a big deal. And driver confidence uh, working up to pace in a car that's new to them this weekend. Yeah, getting used to the adjustments. Right. And all part of the plan. So driving a different car in every single session, you know, <laughs> <laughs> obviously making improvements, but definitely a different car in every session. God, this car feels un freaking believable. I am having an absolute blast. I'm trying to focus, but I can't keep from smiling. A little jump. Yeah, baby. <laughs> There's the Mini Cupper car that we were talking about. The I mean, car. Look, look at the wrap on it. Yeah, yeah it, it, it looks great. The track, it looks fantastic. Unbelievable, I yeah, think. From what we saw in the morning versus what happened here, I mean, it looks so much nicer. Yeah, and Cerise had caught up with them earlier to, to do that interview. It was, it was early yesterday. Another pickup, a 106-350 for the FCP Euro team with the Mini Cupper car. Showing to, how much you can do with a team behind it as well. Trying to get up there with Mooncake. And it back about uh, seven-tenths of a second. Cupper again, another pickup to a 106-227, <laughs> closing in on the knocking on the door, knocking on the door, breaking hard at the three. Holy sh! I think I can break at the two. I definitely can. I wish I had a little bit more time. One more session might be all the difference. Pulling over and letting Mini Cupper go on by. Great looking livery on it too. Not only did they apply it here. It'd be funny if they designed it here too, but they didn't. But uh, it just looks really good. They did a nice job applying it. The car looks great up close. And it is hasty work, but not bad work by any stretch. It's really well put together. And mechanically, it's been running great. I'm gonna commentate or curse them right now just by saying that, but it's been, <laughs> it's been rock solid so far, at least on the outward perspective. Give me one more flyer, baby. Please, no checkered. Checkered flag. I wanted that uh, FL5, but I'm not going to get him. All right. Well, that concludes the on-track portion of the FCP Euro Mini Cupper. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have more to talk about, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank... CRP Ryan, especially Corey for his uh, legwork, and of course CRP Ryan for supporting us and everything we do at FCP Euro. And I most importantly <laughs> want to thank FCP Euro and Mike Hidalgo, because as we mentioned to you guys, when we got this car, it was not as track ready as we thought, which we should have known being at a scrapyard. But uh, Mike did an awful lot of work in a very short time span. Uh, he did a lot of work in a very short time span, and I'm really looking forward to coming back here at Lime Rock with Mike Hidalgo in the Mini Cupper and seeing how he can stack up, because he knows every nut and bolt of this car. All I know is, well, in the last 15 minutes or so of this car in full spec, pull into pit lane, talk to the boys, and see what we ran for a time. I didn't kill it. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> no, you knocked yourself down though. I'm sure I did. What did I run? Uh, 106. Two, I want to say. Okay. Um, I've gone a little you bumped, fast. You bumped yourself off of uh, seventh, out of, out of seventh place. All right, well, 
With a little more time in the car, I'm pretty confident that I can knock that way, way. This thing feels awesome. It's so good. It's so good. I'm blown away by this thing. It's ridiculous. I mean, like, the big factor here, I was just saying to these guys, is I'm used to torsion beam in the fit, which means everything in the rear axle is connected. So it's not going to move independently. Whereas this being divorced, you can properly load it up. And I mean, you're used to much better designed cars than I am in the fit. But like, you can actually load it up and that's where I'm kind of having that learning threshold, right? Is learning how hard I can lean on this thing. I think on a day where there's a little less chaos going on and I'm a little more acquainted with this car, my personal best, like I said here, historically in the fit was 106 flat. I think, I mean, I almost got that just now in this thing, just learning it. So. 105, 104, if I could get in there with 100 horsepower, I'd be happy every day of the week. And like, if you wanted to duplicate this at home, yes, we put the, the hours in, we have the cage and all that, but ultimately, cut and dry. Basically all you need is, it, it's pads, it's discs, tires, wheels, a sway bar, coilovers, maybe some camber plates. But like, I mean, I, watching you out there, I think we're kind of sharing the same sentiment. This thing rules. This thing is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it was just great to see it out there and we were just watching you just going up that leaderboard with every lap you're just cutting into the pack cutting into the pack you really took it from the back of the pack that's where we were when the when the day started yesterday to it's running mid-pack and this is your first day driving this modified car I mean if you get a little bit more seat time this could be a class leader I mean the two of us were just when you were out there a lot you're chopping seconds off and I'm like finding little stuff here and there it's just it's it's a good car I'm coming from the, I have an allegiance to the fit because I own one, I built it, I've been running it for two years, but like, this is probably the way. I'll just say it. It's faster in a straight line. I'm way more confident in the suspension, the drive dynamics. And it looks really, really good out it there too. Better. The CRP Rhine Orange, the FCP Euro Blue, together as one, it's just, it looks right. It's awesome. All right, Corey, I believe you have roughly 12 hours to get home, so I think you're probably gonna wanna hit the road sooner than later. I really. We at FC Piero have to thank you so much for your man hours, your wheel, your wheeling of the Mini Cupper, and also, of course, CRP Ryan for allowing us to do this, supporting us, making this car something capable of doing all this in just a, such a short span of time. It's just, thank you so much. Well, thanks to the FCP Euro team, everybody that was here at the track with us. I mean, we would not have been able to get this done without all hands on this, working on this, you know, all through the afternoon and the evening, and everybody that worked on it before we even got here to get it, to get it pre set up for us. It's it's dialed in. It's I, I'm blown away. Thank you so much. One of these days, we're going to have to get you back up here. Maybe in a little bit quieter of a day. And we'll have to see if we can cut that time down. Because I, I feel like you I got, got even more home, in there. But how about we do, how about we just do straight Rain swap? Check? I think we do straight oh, okay, swap. I think okay. I'm, just, I'm going home. Bye. Bye, Corey. I'm taking the cupper. <laughs> I'm out of here. It's too much fun.